organizations that hold digital uh, collections of Pacific um, things around the world, and from uh, libraries, museums, galleries, um, and to share them on our website, Digital Pacific. I'll hand over to Suliana to introduce herself. Um, Maloile, everyone. Um, thank you for joining our session today. My name is um, Soliana Bell. I am the Research Librarian Pacific at the Alexander Tumbo Library. So I work in the Research Inquiries team at the Bell. Liana, would you like to introduce our esteemed guest today? Yes, let me get my massive amount of notes up. Hold on. Um, so our guest for today is um, Gola Wola Murphy. She's my auntie, so I call her Auntie Wola. Um, she has done so much for our community. She has supported Tawan families with their settlement into the Wellington region since the 1980s. Um, she has a massive biography, so I'll just read like a few of the things that she's done. Um, in 2005, she founded Makato Ongahe of our Tawan Community Wellington Inc. and is the chairperson and treasurer for the group. Um, this group provides assistance and support to Tawan families in Wellington. Um, she's really heavily involved in her church. She's the secretary and treasurer for Diocese of the Gaigolo Christian Church in Wellington, and she's been there in that role since um, 1980. Um, she's been a representative chair of the Wellington City Council's Pacific Advisory Group for six years, and her Pacific Wellbeing model for Sir Fale continues to be referred to by the group today. Um, she has been a member of Wellington Pacifica Patrol Volunteer Group with the New Zealand Police since 2014. Um, she was the treasurer for the Tom and Wellington Association Langafonu Afafine Donga and the Newtown Community Playground Centre in the 1990s. And she's provided cultural expertise and curation for exhibitions at Te Papa Tongarewa, Korirua Pataka Museum and the National Library. Of New Zealand, so that is why we wanted, we needed her to um, expertise for today. Uh, last year, she received the Queen's Service Medal for all of these wonderful works she's done. So, Vola, thank you, welcome, thank you for joining us today. Malo alpito, malo el almaria, malo el ele, a tonga coto, a metacoto, a mea maiki. For one, I'm um, so grateful to join with you guys to share my expertise of whatever I can <laughs> help whichever way I can. Malo Alpito. Malo. Um, so just letting everyone know the agenda for today. So today we we're going to be sharing some of the Tong collections that you can find on Digital Pacific website. Um, some of the items will be from Auckland Libraries, um, Auckland War Memorial and also Te Papa. Um, after that, um, after the, we show these items, I'm going to, Tim is going to be sharing our user contribution feature on Digital Pacific. So if you find any collections that you know um, about, you want to share your knowledge and your memories, just like all it is today, um, you can do so. Um, then Soliana is going to be sharing about the Pacific Family Guide that you can find on the National Library website. And at the end, I'm going to be showing you some of the other resources um, that where you can find some Tongan collections. So cool. I'm just going to share my screen and we can get into it. Cool. Everyone can see our Digital Pacific website. Sweet. Okay. So this is our Digital Pacific website. Um, because it's Tongan Language Week, um, we've changed the greeting to Malo e um, So like I said, um, this is a website where you can find collections from around the world, around Pacific collections, sorry. Um, so you can either use the search bar, um, explore by location, or by media type, image, objects, videos, audio, text, and map. Um, also by our many con uh, content partners, or else you can have a look at our highlighted items, which are Tongan, uh, from Tonga. We also have our uh, featured user contributions, but also Suliana this week has also written a blog for Tongan Language Week. So if you do have time, please have a read. 
it's a really touching story. But today we are going to go straight to uh, the location, Tonga. And so you'll be greeted with a uh, Tonga greeting. And this is how many records we have from Tonga. Um, so you can search by media type again, content partner, or collections. But for today, we have already selected some of the items to show for you. So the first one we're going to show is from Auckland Libraries. Um, so over here it says storage of yams and kava roots from Tonga. And so we're going to go to the original source here. And it has a bit more information about um, the object that they hold. So you can have a look at that. But we're going to look, dive into the picture here. So Villa, do you know much about this picture here? And could you tell us a little bit more about it? So it looks like it has kava roots maybe here. Yeah, this one, the kava roots. Yeah. And um, also the bar from the back in here, those mm -hmm. two bars. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and my thought on this one, it's the biggest kava roots in Tonga at the time. Oh. Um, because um, in the Maori um, traditional, they usually build up like a big um, stage like that, a giant one. <laughs> and they said it's more like a state for the feast and mm -hmm. they put it in ranking. And that's how I can see it's, it's a uh, umupuaka, that's the um, pick that it's in the basket over there. If you can oh, see where my arrow is. This one here? Yes. Oh, yeah. It looks like how that's how they present the, presenting the kava root, the tallest and the biggest in Tonga. And that's how they secure it and deliver it to the place in all in one piece. Oh, okay. Um, do you know whereabouts this picture is taken? Yes, definitely. Um, this one, it was taken um, at Bangai, and they just ready to enter the, the palace. Oh, and yeah. I can tell the um, office from the back, the um, Fale, yeah. that's the um, palace office at the moment. And is it still there? And they still, it's still there. Cool. Um, what about these people on the side here? Who, would, who might they be? Uh, I was thinking that one of them, it could be um, some of the um, nobles people from that family when they, went to the, when they went to the king's palace and they have to present those things. But it depends on the occasion at the time. Yeah. Um, Vula, have you ever seen this in your lifetime? This whole displaying the looks like towers. Have you seen that before? Uh, no, I have not seen it before uh, to build it so high like that. Mm. Um, but it's only more like a quarter or half of that one, you know, that um, I have seen it when I was grew up in Tonga. Are they still doing it now, today? It depends on the size of the cover. Uh, some of them, uh, they just only, they don't grow so wild like that. Um, it, uh, these days, it's just only maybe half of the size of, size of the cover tree. Mm -hmm. And they usually build it to secure it for the, as a whole plan when they presenting it. But um, some of them now, they even they bring it, it's still green, got the green leaves and things, they can still carry it in one piece and present it as, it is. Oh, cool. Is there any questions? Any other questions coming through? They can ask at the end. They can ask at the end. Cool. I think we'll move on to our next um, image, which is uh, it says up here preparing a royal feast. Uh, preparations for a royal feast in Tonga. And this is a postcard showing preparations for a royal feast in Tonga. 
The data is 1910 to 1929, and it's also handled by Auckland Libraries. So we'll just go to the original um, source, a bit more information here on the site as well. So what, what consists of a Tongan feast? <laughs> the, the Tongan feast, I was um, thinking for that, um, between that time, that's when Queen Salote um, came to the throne. Oh. Uh, because um, she came to the throne in the 1918. Yeah. Um, because when the uh, King Dubo II died, and that's how um, the nobles and the villages and all the people that they are responsible to contribute for the feast. And that's how they presenting all the things that they can get um, to prepare for that. So I was just looking at this here. What? <laughs> there might be. <laughs> um, that one definitely it's the big fish in a big catch. Um, I was thinking it could be a shark. It could be a hakula. Hakula is one of the uh, big kingfish in Tonga that they um, suggested to be part of our, uh, the dis part of the art design for the flag of Tonga. Oh. Because there were four things that they suggested to put on the flag. And that's why I thought that big fish, it could be Hakula or big shark. A big shark, yeah. So what are these over here? What um, they okay, they, they are cover roots, those one too. And then on this? On this yeah. one, they are the pigs. And some pigs. Yes. And then and another pig. They're just using the leaves and all the greens, you know, to wrap up the um, pigs and those. Yeah. And the stand they got in there, because they need the um, people to carry them. They did not have any wheels <laughs> to um, build into there so they can drag it, but they just only use the, um, the trunk of the trees. Oh, and yeah. that's why it helped for all the men men in the villages to all come and help and participate to carry it, to bring it to the palace. Nice. And so uh, when would you have a Tongan feast? What occasions would you have a Tongan feast? Uh, they usually do it when they have the royal uh, wedding and even the tangi, like the mari, the funeral, and also some um, birthday, the king, when they used to have their birthdays and celebrating it, that's part of it too. And um, if you can see the far end in here for the pig, it's similar for the giant state that they presented, presented some of the pigs and things earlier on when we look at that picture before. Yeah. But that's similar how they presenting all the pigs. And some of them, they usually bring yams and things to fruit drops, whatever the best in the village or what they can get at the time to present it to the king in his uh, household. Um, I think we've got a few questions coming through on the chat that we might want to answer. Um, so this is a question from Elise. Is there a correlation between the age of the cover plant and the quality of the cover that, co that it comes from? Yes, there are certain um, villages in Tonga that they um, grow the cover or grow it and just save it for a big occasion like this. And most of the nobles in Tonga, they know their own duties. They have to prepare for that. Mm. And the older the cover, the bigger the size, and it mature. That it's that's the best. Hmm. Thank you. Um, another one from Liam. Are sharks or hakula reserved for chiefs, or is anyone able to eat them? Um, it could be for anyone to eat, eat it. You know, the whole village. You can feed the whole village with that. 
but because the catch that they just hit at the time, and that would be one of the best, and that's how they, um, that's why they presented on that day. Oh, nice. Um, um, there's another question from Christine. Who actually are assigned to prepare the food? Uh, is there a selection of villages that have to prepare the food? Yeah, in Tonga, they said, as I said before, the nobles and those, they know their duties <laughs> and their turn to do all the um, preparation of the food or whatever they ask for, or they knew their own duties, they have to perform it on the day. Uh -huh. Everyone knows their own position in Tonga, in the family, in the village, in the country, and where the village is from, that more like traditionally um, owned by the king or that noble, and they know what's the, um, they inherit in the family and their duties to perform. Okay, thank you. Um, there's another question about the tower that we showed in the other picture. So does, the, do you know if the tower holds cooked food or, or already cooked food? Or is it just more like um, stuff from the plantation? Do you have to cook the food before you put it on the tower? Yeah, some, Sometimes when you do that tower like that, it should be pre-cooked or half cooked because you have to really clean it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, oh yeah. And so yeah, these photos are from the early 1900s, so 1910 to 1929. So that was another question that just came through. Cool, I think we'll move on to the next item. Um, so this one is also from Auckland Libraries. Um, the title is Making Coconut Oil in 1928 um, by a Tongan family making to uh, coconut oil. Um, cool. And then so we'll just go to the original and some more information if you want to know about it. So Rula, do you know, so what kind, is this, are they making coconut oil in this picture? <laughs> Um, in my view, it looks like that's how they used to make it in the old days. Yeah. Because the piece of steel they got in there, when you put it in the sun, it's really hot. And that's how it's heated up the uh, coconut um, to drain off the oil from it. And uh, see the tin that they got, they put it in there in the piece of steel, but because it's in a angle way, you know, in a, they tilt the piece. They usually um, bring down the tin and they usually put it at the very end in here. Okay. And that's how they um, collect the uh, oil in there. Mm. So do you think this is coconut that they're drying or it might be some? It, it, it could be coconut, but I um, I would say we usually do that for, with use that with uh, candle nuts, more mm. like a little mix to make it, you know, just drain the oil in a natural way, mm. um, using the sun rather than cooking it in the fire. Smart. <laughs> what would you use the lolo for, um, Tongan oil for Abula? Okay, the Tongan oil, they use it for anything. They can use it as a traditional medicine. They can put it as a moisturizer. They use it for wedding, mainly wedding, because um, that's how they can tell. The old days, they can tell if the bride is a virgin girl or not. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because on her wedding day, she has to wear it. It's a must. <laughs> And, and also for the Tongan girls that they dancing, you don't just put the oil just for the sake of it, but they can tell from there if the girl is already running around and do other things. <laughs> and, and they can tell from there, you know, they, you can see their eyes roll up if the oil of absorb um, by the body, that's mm -hmm. the, the sign and the signal that they can tell. 
uh, <laughs> from there. But um, definitely the oil, they use it for anything. Even these days you can do for cooking, but uh, if they add the spices, they mainly using it on the wedding day and all those things for the most important people. But because I just want to add on, my name is um, named after the, uh, the oil for the royal family. They, they don't make it every day or any time. It's just only when they have the uh, royal wedding and things like that, and they will make it. Oh, so my name is Kolovula. <laughs> Who makes it Vula for the royal family? Um, there are special ladies too that they can make it because it's a secret. So, so does anyone the ingredients they know? Are not really known for the commoners. It's only the people that they work in the palace and the old ladies that they related for them that they can make it because they know all the ingredients. When was the last time have you um, heard of them use, making it? Uh, last time when I was in Tonga, when Princess Pilolevu was um, married, when she got married, then my auntie or my second mom, Oto Ota Eva, she made it because I was uh, staying with her opposite the palace. And um, the way she made it every day, you got to add on all the kakala, all the uh, herbs and all the coconut cream and all those things for throughout for a whole week before the wedding. So that's the last time I saw it. And it came out, it's only a small bottle. Even you add on so many coconut greens and things mm -hmm. like that. It's just so special. Mm -hmm. Do the questions, Tops. Uh, yeah, you asked the question from Sione. There's some before. Just, okay. Um, where are we? We're up to sports. Your next question. Um, is it true that the shark was on was one of Donga's gods? It was. It they can. It just like other countries, they can just pick anything to pray for, because you know in the all days when they are in the dark, you know, they can pick anything to pray for. Mm. And we have another question. Why is Vavao called Lolo Halai Valu? Lolo Halai Valu, because you know Vavao, it's more like at the wharf, you can see when the sun rise and you can see on the surface of the sea, that it's more like it's a glittering at the time when the sun shine into there. And that's why that's mean they said there is uh, oil in there on the surface of the Sea of Vavao. Mm. Vavao is just one of the outer islands of um, Donga. That make up Donga. That's right. So, um, question was, um, are the coconuts harvest from any particular location for making the royal oils? Mm. Uh, it can be from anywhere because it depends um, who got the coconut trees and what it's available. It's only the people that they making it that make it more special. Okay. And um, we have another question about the sharks. Very popular. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Can you we tell can us? any fish. <laughs> Shark here, eh? So the question was, can you please tell us about shark callers, the people who would call or catch the sharks? The people they catch the shark, they, they, it depends on the family that they will have the boat at the time or steamship to go and do the fishing. Mm. But if they are, you know, they know that, that um, if that the coronation that coming up at the time, and they went fishing for it, they thought that's provided from above to um, bring it to present to the king. But for the family and things like that, they usually um, either that, they call it, there is a place in Tonga, they call, they do the no'anga, they specialize on that. 
in one of the villages and they can just go in do the fishing for the shark. Ah, okay. What's that village? Um, I can't think of it now. <laughs> um, I remember they used to do the dance that they got the black um, um, costumes and things. Okay. Uh, I, I'll, if it come back to me, <laughs> if I'll remember it later, I'll, um, I'll, I'll post it to you too. But there is a special place in uh, Tonga for that. Nabutoka? Yes, that's it. Okay. In Hahake. Yeah, Pauline. I was going to say in Hahake. Yeah, thanks, Pauline. <laughs> so you already knew your question. You just <laughs> and a different question, a different different answer. Someone else answered. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. And another question in regards to the second picture, the men prepared and gathered food. What did the woman do <laughs> about the feast? <laughs> They will prepare, but the women, they got to prepare the mats and the tapa and all those things. Yeah. That's, that's the ladies' work to prepare the mats, the tapa, the whatever they can gather to bring. They usually bring it together with the uh, pigs and kava and the shark. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what our next picture is about which is Tongan woman preparing to weave mats in 1928. Oh. Um, and it's also held by the Auckland Library. So we'll just go to the original record. Um, Vula, are they preparing mats in this one? Uh, what I'm looking at, I disagree with that. I'm <laughs> sorry that I have to say that. Uh, because the, um, the lady, what she's doing, she's stripping off the... Um, the bark from mulberry tree, that's preparing for a kokaanga or making the ngatu or tapa. And, and you can see the long uh, stick that they got in here with that little, little girl in here kneeling, um, watching the mother. Uh, that's the piece when she's doing it, she's stripping it off. And then the, um, the stick in there in white, white color you can see that's when it's already off from the trunk yeah. and then these lots in here they are the strips mm, they are the shops, yeah. because yeah. if it's um if it's a bandanas or something like that that's uh, or flex that's how people are preparing themselves for the weaving in the la langa but definitely that's preparing for making the tapa. What's the Tongan word, um, Wola, for the mulberry tree? Go tutu. Tutu. They go, because the, they call it tutu because it's a long um, plant. And when they, when it start growing it, and every week the um, farmer or the family that they own, that they go and break the little branches so that to make sure it grows straight. Oh, interesting. How long does it take for it to grow or to get to the size to, that you need it? To the size you get, it depends on the, sometimes it is usually you grow it this year for next year. Oh, okay. But, you know, yeah. to let them grow and mature because the thickness of it when you um, harvest or you cut them off it's already got the right thickness mm. I think we'll move on to the next picture which is the next step of it I'm um, sorry so this is from Auckland Libraries again um, in 1928 and a Tongan woman preparing tapa cloth so what does there she do in this picture? So that picture, that's how the lady beading that strip that the other one that just um, strip off from the stick, you know, from the mulberry tree trunk. So that's how wide it is when they beading it. Oh. Because um, after they 
you know, the first um, picture that we saw before, once they strip it off, they peel off the skin and they um, roll them in a round shape and then they dry it. And then before they beating it, they have to soak them in water mm -hmm. overnight. And then that's her, what the size, just not big enough yet, but that's, she just started to beating it to go bigger and, and, um, and become more thinner for the size, the thickness that they wanted to make the tapa with because they will have to join it again, together later on. Oh. Um, when would you, like, why would you prepare a tapa mat for? What would you? Uh, yeah, what every, you every, every Tongan home, they should have a tapa. That's the only more like, um, the thing is traditional for all the families to have one. And more like if you, if a new family, then you got a child, you know, you're going to have a baby. You got to start preparing some tapa and things making, preparing more like that's the only koloa you're going to have in your house. Part of it, the koloa, the koloa is the tapa cloth and also the mat. Mm -hmm then you know there are some other things that will come after when the child born. <laughs> um, Fula, what did they use to hit the, the thing? What did they use to hit? They, yeah, it's a stick they already, um, they put a stripe um, shape on it. Um, uh, if I knew they gonna, you're gonna ask, I gonna bring my ike. They call it the ike. Oh, oh, ike. And there is part of it, it's flat. It's, it's um, more like a square shape, mm. but then, but it's long. So one part of it, they, they make an artwork in there, like a, uh, sorry, I can't think of the word, but there is a, also, it's a different shape in there, but then one of them, it must be flat because towards the end of the beading of the um, strip, they have to flat it when they beading it, but it's called Ike in Tonga. Do you wanna ask the question, Tops, or we? Right, we've got one more question, a uh, couple more questions. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what is the Tongan word from pandanus leaves um, and what to use to make um, fine mats? Okay. Uh, the pandanus, it's the same as flax to Tonga. And mm. the Tongan word for that, it's called loakau. No. But then loakau in Tonga, they got different varieties of loakau. And, and, and it depends what do you gonna make in the low cow bandana tree you got, that's what do you gonna make mm. with the bandanas. But it's, that's why the, the mat is so different colors, the fine mat, the white, and also the brown, and also the light uh, brown, and all those colors, it depends on the bandana tree you got, but it's mm. called low cow. Oh, okay. Um, we've also got another question. What are some changes that you see in Tongan Tapa making from the olden days to today? Have you seen any differences of how they make it? So different these days. Some people, it, the kupesi, that's, um, that's the design. That they, um, people pick their own design now and whatever is easy for them to do. And they doing it in a short cut in so many, they, they doing so many processes in a way that suit them. Hmm. Um, because in Tonga, even uh, to do the make tang tapa, they usually have a like a half trump size and they have to, to make the tapa on it. But oh. in these days they just use a flat table that it's, you know, it's easier for them to do it. And also they can just make whatever design that they want, but the 
design that usually used it always traditional and it can tell where the people from and what uh, village they making it. Mm. You can identify that, make it more available. Mm. Uh, just looking at some of the pictures and Gupesi and all the names for my Zoom tonight with my, with my community for the different um, Gupesi. And I have seen so many that it's so different. Mm. And also they're using the Palangi material now. Oh, yeah. And use them, mix them. Some of them use them for the bottom um, layer and use the tapa on the proper um, strip from the mulberry tree on top. Oh, changes. Um, another question is, do, we, do you know what is the structure at the back of her? That, that one, it's a fale pola, <laughs> fale tonga. That, that one is the fale tonga. That's, that's how it looks like, how they make the window in there, the shape. Oh, yeah. <laughs> looks like a submarine window. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, on the fale tonga, they, some of them, they used, they, when they got the wee bit of, timber or something like that, they use that whatever shape you, you want or what it's suitable for the family. But yeah. then that polar that's more like that would be their bathroom. Oh. When they go and have their bath, that's why they're <laughs> surrounded <laughs> in a shape like that. <laughs> Interesting. Well, okay, now we're gonna go into the next picture and this is of a top of cloth. This one's held at Auckland War Memorial um, Museum of bark cloth. So its description is Natu Tongan bark cloth in a natural colour with decorative designs in a dark brown and black depicts Tongan royal insignia. So we'll go to the bigger picture here. Um, is this, um, these designs common on Tapa now? Or yes, some people still making it. But uh, the design in there, that's the lupe, that's the dove. Because oh. uh, most of the pictures in here, it's up here on our uh, shield of Tonga. Mm. That's the dove and also the uh, ground. And, then and the eagle. Yeah. E eagle, that's one of the, uh, like I said before, about the hakula. That's one of the artwork or design that they wanted to put up on the flag of Tonga. Oh. Question. Um, oh, should we go for the question in the chat? Tops, or did you have a question? No, no. Um, we missed one before. Is the process that the woman was using before, the old process, is it still used today for making the ngato? If they still have to go through the processes of feeding it and things like that. Yeah. It's the same process. They're still using it the same way because you can't just bring the mulberry heart piece to make the tapa. The process is for like the stripping, the soaking and feeding and flatten them and they have to mend, them, mend um, all the pieces together and that, that's how it came out for that size. Okay. And you have the kubesi underneath mm -hmm. to come up, you know, then you print it. When you have the kubesi, you make the artwork and the design and you attach it to the table they use these days or the half drum that I said shape that they're using it. Sorry. And that's how they put together all of them to come as one piece like that. And after, you know, after they use the brown color, they mention in there the brown color. That's from the coca tree. That's how they painted it to bring up the design. Yeah. And then after that, they usually use a black one. That's mean it's some coca um, juice or the mangroves and they boiled it and um, 
put some other piece of old steels or things like that and to make and leave it in there for days, weeks or so, and it then black. And that's how they got the black dye to mark the design. Okay, thank you, Vola. Um, our next question is, can you tell us a bit about the Ngato Uli and why we don't see many of them today? Mm. Okay. Um, the Ngatu Uli, that's one of the Ngatu Eiki. That's mean that one of the top Ngatu in Tonga. The Ngatu Uli, and also there is a Ngatu Tahina. They are the two royal Ngatu in Tonga, and they are the top and the best. And the way to make it in black, it's they have to um, boil the tui tui, that's the candle nuts. It's hard to make. And, and it's more like it's mostly royalties. If you can, um, they, they can use that, but that's how you're gonna rank in the ngatu. There are so many varieties of, you know, different kind of ngatu that anyone can make. But ngatu only, that's one of the ngatu eiki. That's the top one in Tonga in the ranking. And also ngatu tahina. That's only plain straight white. Mm. Can anyone, um, can us commoners, us normal people have a ngato uli or is it only reserved for them, the whole eki, the royal family? Um, these days, anyone can make it now. And you can see in the funeral and things like that, if you can go to a funeral, then you see when they lay the coffin on a black ngato, then you can tell what's the ranking of that person in the community and what they got at home. And also you can present it to, you know, hierarchy people. So that's one of the top ngatu in Tonga. Okay, so thank you for that. Next, we're gonna show the waist garment. The whakapai. So this garment is held at Auckland Museum again. We'll go to the original. Can you, does this look traditional? Can you tell us a bit more about this item? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can laugh at it now. Um, that the way they're making it, it looks tra traditional in Tonga. And that's um, the Hapai people, they making those one because they, it should made out of the kia, the fine um, bandanas mm -hmm. that they making the fine mat from. And um, for those one, they more like the ribbons, ribbons from yeah. the <laughs> <total> <laughs> shop. <laughs> I just show you my one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I got a traditional one. Oh, yeah. This is the hibiscus made out of that. Mm. I but um, it's it, they call it by same name, the way they making it. But this one they tie the hibiscus, but for that one they usually tie the um, the fine the bandanas. Um, gear and mm. then that's how it will create those colors. What do you use the, it for, Bola? The whakaapai? Okay, the whakaapai that they, they usually use it for the costume when they performing. For people, they do laka laka, they can do ma ulu ulu or whatever uh, dances they choose to uh, perform, and that's how they usually using it to wear it. But uh, one uh, photo of the late king I saw, uh, um, he had it when he had his cover ceremony. But it must be the real stuff, not the ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had one question from um, about the ngato. Um, how, how do you determine how long a ngato should be? That, it depends when you, from the time you're growing and you know, the tree, if it's a year or so to make it. And you like um, for a ceremony, if you know your 
so they're gonna get married next year. You better start preparing it now for next year. It will be ready by then. And in Dangato, they really last for a long time because the material, the quality of the mulberry tree, um, when it mature properly, the better. Because um, I remember we went and presented the tapa at the uh, Tepapa for when uh, Queen Salote was transferred from Auckland to Tonga on a, on a tapa, on a ngatu, lau nima, lau teau. And then um, he, they gave it, the government gave it to the, the army, the people that they are transferring the body when she um, died in Auckland. And then it's still in good quality. Mm -hmm. There are some damaging, but then we did, got the lady and repaired it and it's all good. So the Baba got it. How about the sizes, Wola? Long, like that's, real that's, long? Yep. Yeah. It depends on the mulberry uh, strips that you got. If you want to make um, uh, only a 10 foot one, 10 feet, because, but it goes by the langanga. You can see the line in here. Mm. See the line? One, two, three, four, five. See, it's only, it, this one is called, called only kongangatu, only part right. of it that it's, um, piece that cut off from a big piece, oh. from a big whole tapa. You can make up to 50 feet long or a hundred. <laughs> we have another question. I'm assuming why are these, I'm not sure if it's for the whakahapai or the ngato. Mm -hmm. um, so Eliza, I'll just wait to see what you say if it's in regards to the ngato or the whakahabai. But while we pause on that, we'll just go into our last um, image since our time is going. So this is uh, Kenneth Tuai and some of his family at the funeral of Tavita Tofuvaha Tuai. Um, and so this um, is held at Te Papa. So you can see this image online on their website as well. Mm. So, um, well, can you tell us a little bit about what what they're doing in this image? Oh, okay. Um, this one, it's um, it's a funeral. Mm. Definitely, they um, those ladies, they uh, they were at the funeral, and you can look at the mats they got. The bigger the size, the better. And that's how they pass on the uh, mat, you know, that um, when it's turning all the mats and things like that, that's what they use it for. Oh, okay. And, um, and, and, and it shows in here, they are ranking in the family. That's why they're wearing those big mats around their um, waist. So, um, what, oh, you go, Sully. so what ranking would they be in the family since now? Okay, <laughs> um, the ranking that's the lowest of lowest. And the lowest that what I mean, um, in the Tongan, in the Tongan custom for the ladies, uh, it depends what family and where are you from. Mm -hmm. But the, um, the family on the, you know, to bring it um, in a small um, way to explaining it, um, may I say, uh, take Suli as an example. Her father's sister, that's Suli's superior. And she is the fahu in the family. And for the people that lowest to um, Suli, on her mom's side, it's her mom's mother's uh, brothers that they are the lowest in the family. And that would be the, um, those ladies in there from that side. And so what would their role be during the funeral? Okay, their role at the funeral, they are the one to do all the putting. You know, whatever they ordered to do, 
that stem that they have to run here, there, wherever. Even if the Fahu wants to come and stand their foot on them, that's that's the their right place. They usually say they are the chair. <laughs> they are, that's their chair. If they want to, you know, want to hooky or sit on them or do anything that they want. And you can see, uh, see all the short hair that they got in there too. That must be after the funeral and they have all the haircut ceremonies. Mm. But at the same time, when they, um, they are not allowed to be inside in the whatever the occasion will be, or maybe like if Suli's 21st birthday, all of them got to be outside in the kitchen doing the cooking, cleaning, whatever that, um, you know, all the tasks that we don't really want to do. And that's their duty to do. Um, just going back to their hair, who would cut their hair? And what would the hair be used for? Okay, the, um, the hair, they usually, um, the person to cut it is the superior for those people. Like I said, it would be Suli's um, auntie. And then they usually use the hair when they have the haircut. They usually plaited them and use it for the wrap around, you know, the like um, rope for their ta'ovala. Ah, oh, okay. So just like there. Only if they use a scissors, pair of scissors. How did they used to do it in the old days when they didn't have scissors? <laughs> in the old days, they used a live piece of... Um, firewood oh and that, that's how they when they come they got to like that just burn their hair off burn their hair yes Interesting. that's showing how high you are in the family that's the time you have to show off and you know who are the people that you can do anything you like you so can the high person is the fahoe or the, the superior fahoe, yes the superior in the family. So they get to do the whole burning or cutting? Yes. Interesting. Um, we have some, I think we've got some questions. Two questions? Yeah. Oh, where do you keep your gatu? Um, so <laughs> <laughs> I should have a museum. The <laughs> museum. <laughs> <laughs> is it okay to put it under the under the bed you can put under the bed but it's it, you know in Tonga they use Tangatu as a mattress mm -hmm. that's how they they have the Tongan bed the mat underneath and then Tangatu on top that's mm -hmm. how when they present it to a wedding and things like that they give the fala the, um, the mat and they give the Tapa, and that's that's the bed. We didn't have the palangi bed, you know. To <laughs> that's when you go to a Tongan fale, Tongan house. That's the bed. Oh, that's the bed. And the, the best place is to put on the floor and cover them properly and things like that. It will make it last longer. Keeping it flat. Mm. Um, another question that came through. Are these mats specially reserved for funerals? Do you have different mats for different occasions? So are these ones only for funerals? Um, only for funerals, those kind of mat that you have to wear. Yeah. The, the, the best one to wear to show your ring in the family, the one that already torn into pieces. Oh. And that's why people got the, some other, you know, those ones. Like yave yave, but the all the the pieces that that's the better, but they mm -hmm. just only reserve it for funeral. They mm -hmm. can't wear it to a wedding or anything like that. <laughs> Did I answer that? Yeah. Um. Any? I think that's all. The one more. Um. Mm -hmm. One more question. What? the main differences between ngato uli and other ngato are the designs the same i think no, you kind sorry. of answered this before but yeah yeah the ngato uli is just all black 
and and there are about three of them that they classify different free ngatu, but most of the ngatu only that all painted in black. Mm. Um, oh, and the designs, no, the, the, what's the other part about the designs? Are they the same, different? Different, different design. It depends on the village where you're coming from or family or whatever you like, you know, you can put flowers and things on that these days. But there are so many traditional um, kupesi pattern that you can make the ngatu with. Cool. cool, I think that's all of our questions. You did awesome to manage to answer all those questions. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I lost my voice after my radio program yesterday, but never mind. <laughs> Lots of questions about sharks in eh, today. <laughs> it seemed to be the focus point today. We should have our whales because Tonga, you know how they used to eat the whales, they feed the whole island of mm -hmm. Lava'u when I remembered it when I was young. Hopefully we find some photos. But never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Just only to make it lighthearted, even not allowed to now. <laughs> um, so just because we're running out of time, I'm just going to quickly show some other um, pages and Facebook pages where you can find other Tongan collections. So this one here is the Tongan, Tongan Maritime Museum, which is in Wellington. Oh, in Tonga as well oh, okay. um, so they've been sharing quite a lot of cool posts about um, Tongan history and Tongan artifacts yeah. so get along to that Facebook page another one is Tonga Heritage Society um, so they do the same as well we've got your Valerie and they're also sharing some Tongan links as well so have a look at that um, and the last one oh Last two is Mia Offa Gallery, um, which is located in the Tanoa International Dateline Hotel. So if you're in Tonga and you didn't know about these groups, click onto it and have a look. And then our last one that we're going to share is TEDx Nukua Lofa, um, which they're going to be starting up um, some presentations on November the 25th. So they're also a content partner for Digital Pacific. And once their content and their video is up, they're going to go onto our website, so you can check it out as well. Cool. So now I'm going to stop share. Um, yeah, we've just got lots of comments coming through. Thinking, oh, I hope thanking they're you. all good. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, thanking you for so much knowledge that you've just shared today. <clears throat> My Lord, I'll be there. Mm. Um, Excellent. Thanks so much, Tabatu. And thank you very much, uh, Ms. Murphy, for all of your sharing. Uh, hopefully you have a nice, uh, a nice warm drink, lemon, lemon honey drink to help your throat after you finish here. Um, but yeah, no, it's just, it's just really fascinating looking at those pictures from over 100 years ago. And often I think we see them and we just go, oh, yep, it's a picture. But actually all of your uh, insights and the details around the obviously the sharks, uh, but also the, the mulberry tree and, and some of the processes there were really, really um, fascinating. And they help bring that um, these old photos to life and help us fill in our gaps in our understanding as well. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and thank you to everyone who joined us in the, the Zoom chat. We think we had about 40 people um, in there as well. Um, we've recorded the session too, so we'll tidy up the edit and stuff, and then we'll put it on our uh, YouTube channel and Facebook page as well. Um, but thank you so much to everyone who joined us. I uh, hope the rest of your day is um, uh, relaxing uh, or, or fulfilling if you're into the workspace too. Um, I'll just uh, throw it to you, Mrs. Murphy, just to wrap up and close our session in a prayer. Mm. Um, before I um, say that, Grace, thank you everyone for listening um, this afternoon. And also I wish you all the best and continue on celebrating the Tongan language week. Lea Pakatonga uh, to enrich Aotearoa with our holistic education. And I hope that talking today, it's 
will take us to another level of better education. So let's pray. Kako iglesia eko si sukalaisi mo ofala hetu ako tamai pe hola umari ma onyoni ya tek maltol ko to aya mo kaunga we ai national library ya si sukalaisi ko alma fora mo ui. Amen. Amen. Malo. Malo al pito. Malo pito. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone. Special thanks to Tabatu and Soliana for organizing and hosting everything. Take care. Malo. Thank you. Malo. Malo al pito bula. Mau mak awak ahal dek dek. Iya. Why have we now? Are we still alive? Are we finished? Facebook live finished. Okay. We're gonna leave now. Thank you so much, Bula. Malo, Pita. Thank you for your time. Oh, I'm going to text you your address. Text, I'll text yeah. you. Oh, you did amazing. <laughs> yes, a lot of knowledge there that we don't know. Good. I feel like Good. we can Thank do these you. sessions like every month. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Just took five pictures and be like. <laughs> Those questions are pretty hard. I was like, I don't know if you know about sharks. <laughs> <laughs> But I remember, I couldn't remember the village. <laughs> no, but, but someone else yeah. did. Yeah. yeah. Oh. yeah. Must be Suli's relative. <laughs> yeah, I forgot that's my, my sharp blood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Okay. 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 Thank you so much. Yeah. 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 Take care. We can all go straight to the 1 p.m. briefing now. <laughs> Dr. Bloomfield. Oh, right yeah. There. Bloomfield. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, cool. Okay. Take care. All right. Bye.